The following program is brought to you by Caltech. Dr. Mark Ryder received his PhD in electrical engineering in 1970. And today we honor him for his work on perpendicular rec recording technology, which provides a tenfold increase in storage density on every hard disk and also other applications on full disk encryption to prevent the theft of stored data. His game-changing technology is a benefit that millions of people, including many here, depend on on their personal and professional lives when they use their iPods, make online purchases, or play Major League Baseball on their PS3. If you, I don't do that, but some of you may do that. <laughs> Dr. Kreider is expiring the next generation of engineers at Carnegie Mellon University, where he serves as professor of electrical and computer engineering. At CMU, he's utilizing his research and industry experience to inspire new knowledge and applications within this very fast-changing and dynamic discipline. He continues a legacy advanced by many Caltech alumni to further the scientific and engineering innovations within academia and industry. He is a member of the National Academy of Engineering and a fellow of both the American Physical Society and the IEEE. IEEE has recognized him for his innovations, uh, honoring him with the Ma Magnetic Society Achievement Awards, the Reynold B. Johnson Information Systems Award, and the Third Millennium, Millennium Medal. Dr. Kreider, it is a great honor to recognize you as a distinguished alumni. By the way, we don't steal those, okay? They will be returned to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a great honor to be here, and I would like to thank Dr. Chameau and the whole Caltech community for this very high honor. Um, it's, you know, I'm humbled by the uh, looking at the list of past awardees as well as those receiving their awards here today. Um, but looking at that list, it makes me think of the fact that Caltech really teaches people leadership. Uh, it does this through the pursuit of knowledge. One is always driven here to be pursuing more knowledge. And I think that if one does that, no matter what the field is, you're in, invariably, you end up being a leader in your field if you do it over a long period of time. I think that, you know, that has, you know, I've had a career which has spanned industry and academia. I, I make a joke out of the fact that I'm not successful at either one. I've gone back and forth between them two or three times. And, you know, no matter where you are in those, in the either, either sphere, so to speak, uh, the Caltech background comes through. They, it's also true that, you know, Caltech teaches you uh, a lot about interdisciplinary work. And, you know, my degree, actually my degree says electrical engineering and physics, because when I was here, it was electrical engineering, and then there wasn't an applied physics department. That transition was actually made while I was a, a uh, I think what I was still probably when I was a postdoctoral fellow here. And so at that time, you could have a degree in electrical engineering and you got a minor in physics if you wished, and that was what I did. But more than that, uh, you know, I can recall, yes, taking hearing lectures by Feynman, taking his advanced quantum mechanics course. I can remember uh, talking with Nicholas George about laser speckle. Of course I talked with my advisor, Professor Floyd Humphrey, uh, on a regular basis 
But the thing I learned at, at Caltech, I'd always been taught that, that earning a PhD meant that you knew how to do independent research. But I learned at Caltech that doing independent research does not mean working alone. What it means is tapping every possible resource uh, that is available to you in order to make the appropriate decision as you go forward and where to go next. Um, the the cross-disciplinary uh, culture extended to the fact that, yes, I took ECE and physics courses, but I also extensively used the machine shop in the mechanical engineering department uh, because, you know, I needed to be able to make things for laser, my laser, which I was uh, putting together for the experiments I was doing. And, and back then, you didn't buy lasers. Uh, this was the 60s. And uh, the lasers had just recently been invented. So you needed all of these different uh, resources within the university to be successful. And I think that, you know, the opportunity to do that, to cross borders, to do all these things, uh, comes about at a place like Caltech, where people work in small groups and they interact between groups very extensively. But also, Caltech brings in a lot of diversity. Uh, I was, you know, as I said, I, my uh, PhD thesis advisor was Floyd Humphrey, but just almost as equally, I worked, worked with Charles Wiltz. And the two of them, it seemed, always had visitors here at, at Caltech. Uh, many of them came from Japan, because Japan is a is, has a strong hold also in the, in the magnetics area where I was working. But a large number of them also came from the Soviet Union. This was in the 60s, right? And, and uh, you know, so this was a tremendously broadening experience. And toward the end of my time, uh, Professor Horst Hoffman came over to spend nearly a year here. Uh, he was from the University of Munich at the time. He and I published a number of papers together, and when he was here, he, he, as he was leaving, he made the comment that if I ever wanted a, an opportunity to, to go to Germany, to let him know. And uh, that was too good to pass up. <laughs> and uh, my wife and I uh, took the opportunity uh, to go to Germany as a visiting scientist right up shortly after I left Caltech. These experiences with the diverse group of people uh, are very broadening, both technically and culturally. Uh, it, and I think that is also important. Uh, if you're going to innovate, I think different people have different ways of thinking. Uh, some people relate, for instance, uh, to tables. Some people relate to, uh, you know, graphics of, of various sorts. Some people take it in via what they hear. Uh, you know, all of these different ways of absorbing information exist. And I think that the fact that at Caltech you are exposed to all of these different cultures, all these different people who have different ways of thinking, different ways of approaching problems, is very beneficial. I will also add one final thing, and that is, I made a phenomenal number of contacts at Caltech that have persisted throughout my career. Um, some of my, my best friends at Caltech also entered, entered the data storage industry, and I see them periodically at, at various conferences around the world. Um, at Carnegie Mellon University, we're fortunate to have several Caltech graduates on our faculty. And in fact, the process is ongoing. As just this last week, I heard a seminar by a Caltech student who is applying for a position at, at Carnegie Mellon University. And I might add, although I don't think there's any offer out or any, any I have no idea where that stands, I was impressed with his seminar, both for the, the depth and the technical knowledge it exhibited and uh, for the vision 
that it showed of where things could go in the future. So again, uh, thank you uh, for all that you have done to, for me and for the world, uh, Caltech. You've done a phenomenal job. Thank you.